Good morning. We'll begin in just a moment. We're just waiting for another representative from the Secretariat to come. Welcome, everyone. We'll let everybody that um, just came in the room here get settled. There's still people coming in, so I'll give it just another few seconds. So my name is St. Amour, and I'm the chair of the Internet Governance Forum's multi-stakeholder advisory group. Anya Genko, which I think most of you have probably been in communication with, is on her way here. She actually um, works in the IGF Secretariat out of the United Nations premises in Geneva, um, where we run with an extremely lean secretariat. So at the moment, she's um, dealing with an issue at registration and um, will be with us just as soon as she, as she can. Um, I'd like to make, or was asked to make, just kind of a, a couple of comments on sort of this year's program overall. Um, focused probably more on how it's actually developed and what are some of the component pieces of it um, so you get some sort of insight into the IGF because it is a rather unique forum which I'll which I'll comment in in a moment and then I think Anya has um, a, a few specific comments on some of the additional uh, 
um, activities in the IGF ecosystem that she'll talk to. And we're meant to be joined by Chengatai Masango, who is actually the head of the IGF Secretariat. Um, and, you know, open for questions. Um, this is all about really facilitating your participation and ensuring you understand kind of the DNA, if you will, of uh, the Internet Governance Forum. It really is rather unique in terms of forums, particularly forums that are convened within United Nations protocols and, and rules. Um, so with that, again, as I said, I'm the chair of the multi-stakeholder advisory group. Um, both the chair and the members of the advisory group are, are appointed by the UN Secretary General. The advisory group is made up of between 50 and 55 members. About 40 percent of them come from governments and they are chosen through the regional process um, that's active within the United Nations. The other 60 percent are split equally, so roughly 20 percent for each one of the other three stakeholder communities, uh, civil society, private sector, and a community that you don't see all that often but has been in the um, IGF community since the earliest days, and that's something called the technical community. The technical community is comprised of those organizations that have specific operation or management roles over key pieces of the, the core internet infrastructure um, or are active, very active in policy setting globally. So um, the uh, Internet Corporation for Assigned Names and Numbers or ICANN, of course with their responsibility over the root system, the Internet Society with all of their activities in policy and uh, developing country and access activities, and then the five regional internet registries who are responsible for um, IP address um, allocation and, and um, IEEE as well. And I think there may be one or two others that fall under that category, but that's, those are the four kind of categories that make up the advisory group. The last three that I just mentioned I and mean, again, I say this because we really want newcomers to participate fully, not only in the meeting here, but also in all the activities of the IGF. The, the appointment processes for those three other bodies, again, civil society, private sector, and the technical community, are determined by processes run by those communities. So they all have their own processes for um, soliciting uh, expressions of interest, um, for making nominations to the Secretary General's office, uh, where the final appointment is made. Um, I think one of the complexities is there is trying to assure that we have the right level of diversity. So that's not only region, it's sub-region, it's country, it's gender, um, as well as the stakeholder group. So it's, it's quite an exercise. But that is the, the group that is responsible for the overall program for the IGF. Um, the IGF is a, is a community-led, bottom-up process. So in that vein, we actually, this year, slightly different from past years, we kind of continue to evolve the, um, the process as we move forward. The um, MAG, Multi-Stakeholder Advisory Group, um, uh, had a call for issues, short call for issues. I think it was a 200-word limit where we best asked the community to say, tell us what are the issues you actually would like to see the IGF um, addressing this year. Um, we had, I want to say 300 responses, but honestly that could be quite right. It could also be quite, <laughs> quite wrong in terms of my memory of the statistics. That process ran back in, in um, March and April timeframe. Once we had those responses in, they were categorized according to tags and themes, and then that led to a, a more detailed call for workshop proposals for this IGF. Um, there were roughly, um, again, I wish I remembered these numbers. <laughs> um, here comes Anya, she can actually help me, but I think, so I'll leave the numbers of the workshop proposals for a moment, but 400? Yeah, I thought it was close to six. So Mary Aduma, who's on the, um, on the MAG um, from Nigeria, just said there were over 400 proposals, but we're looking for Anya to confirm the the number of workshop proposals. In any case, it's um, a relatively high number of proposals for a relatively small number of slots, as you can imagine, at any, at any IGF. 
Um, this IGF is a little abbreviated. Normally we've had a full four-day IGF with a uh, what's called the day zero, which is a pre-IGF day where a number of community groups meet amongst themselves to um, help advance their own sort of issues and, and topics. And then we roll into a four-day IGF. Um, there's a, a rather interesting set of events happening this week here in Paris Digital Week, and this year the IGF is three days. So we had roughly uh, a little over 90 workshop um, sessions that came through that multi-stakeholder advisory group proposal and about another 70 or so um, that are comprised of um, other um, IGF ecosystem activities, such as um, uh, open forums, which facilitate participation from intergovernmental organizations. We also have a number of sessions um, from a couple of other IGF ecosystem activities, um, such as dynamic coalitions, which are bottom-up, community-led um, groups of individuals who are interested in a particular topic um, who work largely virtually um, but meet here at the IGF and also have presentations here at the IGF on anything from Internet of Things to accessibility, um, uh, economic and trade uh, issues. There are 17 of them this year. Um, we also had four best practice forums. Again, um, we solicit input from the community and from the MAG members on what are the best practice forums they think would be of most interest, and then the MAG actually um, selects those, again, on the basis of expressions of community interest. We had four this year, one on local content, one on gender and access, um, one on cybersecurity, and one on artificial intelligence, Internet of Things, and data. And then um, finally, we've had a major intersessional policy initiative. This is its fourth year. It's called Connecting and Enabling the Next Billions. All of these activities are open to the community. It literally is just sign up for the mailing list and the sessions and, and participate. Um, if you want to sit on the lists and kind of get familiar with the topics and, and things, that's, that's great as well. Again, we do everything we can to be as inclusive as, as possible. So um, the meetings are open. There are meeting summaries. The MAG meetings themselves um, are um, both transcribed and streamed. Um, and all of that is up on the website. And of course, there are meeting summaries as well. We have another very, very important part of our activities, which are called national and regional IGF initiatives that I will let Anya talk to in a moment, as she is actually the focal point for those initiatives within the Secretariat. Um, they were actually started, in, in fact, the first NRI um, preceded the very first IGF. Um, and they've grown um, kind of tremendously since that period of time, nearly doubling in the last three years. And right now, we're at a little over 110 recognized national regional IGF initiatives. So um, I'm going to just tell Anya a little bit what, we, what we've done and then um, ask her, I think, to talk about um, the NRIs, because again, they're a very important piece of this activity and a way for all of us to actually keep advancing um, the issues that are both important to us individually and um, important, of course, to um, the countries and, and regions we live in as well. And I think probably, so I just did a general kind of IGF, MAG, how we're all appointed, how many we are. Um, mm -hmm. No, I haven't mentioned. Um, so I'll let you, you talk about, Anya can talk about the IGF villages as well. The one thing I should um, say is that the, um, so the Secretariat is actually funded from something called the IGF Trust Fund. It's voluntary donations because the IGF is an extra budgetary project. These meetings are actually um, hosted and funded by a government. So the French government is our host here this year for this IGF. Um, they pay for the facilities, the translation, um, or interpretation, et cetera. And we're, of course, very grateful to them and all the other host countries that have um, supported the IGF in, in the past. Um, I think those are the key points. If, if you could talk about the IGF village um, and then the NRIs, and then maybe we can come back specifically to the program and, and the questions. title. And, yes. 
Well, good morning to everyone, and uh, I really would like to apologize for being a bit late. The Secretariat is a very small team, so we're multitasking on so many platforms, and I would like to, take, uh, to thank Lynn as the chair for starting this session. So thank you very much for coming uh, this early, and we're very happy to have you all here. Uh, I will uh, very quickly um, say a, a few words about who are the national, regional, and youth IGFs, or as we call them, the NRIs in short, and what do they do, uh, whether they're present at this IGF, and uh, how can you meet them if you're interested. And after that, I will just quickly refer about a very important segment of this meeting, which I think gives this vibrant tone to the, uh, to the IGF, which is the IGF village that I think you could see on the floor that's just above us. So. Uh, the national, regional, and youth IGFs actually um, were not mandated by the Tunis agenda that you know gives the mandates to the IGF. However, they exist uh, in the world, and currently there are 111 uh, countries and regions that are organizing uh, their national processes, regional IGF processes, and youth IGF processes. Uh, a couple of years ago, we kind of spontaneously started uh, meeting at these, at these IGF meetings primarily, but also on some of the regional IGFs, some other meetings where the IGF is present, like ICANN, for instance. And uh, we realized that we are all pursuing the same objectives and the same goal, and maybe given the fact how challenging it is to come up with a very comprehensive agenda on the Internet public policy, uh, it's just common sense that we should work together. So we started working together as a, as a network that was just three years ago relatively small. Around 40 countries and regions were present. And in three years, we really faced this rapid growth that today, as I said, we're, fa we're having pleasure to work with more than 111 countries and regions um, and discuss what are the issues um, pertaining to the Internet governance for their respective communities and how can we help each other, learn from each other, and improve each other's. Um, uh, the NRIs um, and the IGF Secretariat have this collaborative relationship. We do respect very much their independency. They're autonomous, as I said, organic in their creation. They adhere to the same principles as the IGF, which means they are multi-stakeholder, they're bottom-up, their processes are open, inclusive, transparent, and of course, non-commercial. Uh, as a network, uh, we try to facilitate bi-monthly virtual meetings throughout the year, set up a joint agenda, joint objectives that we uh, try to achieve by the, by the upcoming annual IGF meeting and present those outcomes at that annual meeting. So this year is no exception there. Uh, we're very fortunate um, as the NRI's network um, and I as a focal point from the Secretariat that supports the work of the, of the network that the MAG agreed to um, give the main session to the NRIs to organize on a very important topic. It's called the evolution of internet governance with a specific focus on the multi-stakeholder approach. That session will happen tomorrow uh, in uh, room one. And let me just check. Yes, it's uh, from, the, from half past 11 until 12.50. Uh, the session will feature, uh, I believe, more than 40, 40 NRIs that will be present on site. It will be uh, co-moderated by Ambassador Benedicto Fonseca that I think does ne not need an introduction for this community, and I will be in a supporting role uh, to Ambassador Fonseca. So hopefully in 80 minutes we will um, see what are the challenges globally when it comes about the implementation of the multi-stakeholder principle to the IGF processes. That session will be followed by a very important work meeting that I hope the majority of you will join. It's, a, it's an open work meeting between all the NRIs that are present at the IGF. Many of them will be present online, between the chair of the MAG, interested members of the MAG, between the IGF secretariat, and between the colleagues from the UNDESA, which is the Department of Economic and Social Affairs, that's kind of the institutional home of the IGF. The purpose of that meeting, which will be an hour and a half long, will be to see how can we actually help each other, how can we help the IGF through the national and regional processes, but then how can we as a global community support these valuable processes that exist on a level of a country and region. If you would like to learn more about the NRIs, maybe meet with me, meet with some of the NRIs, you can do so. We do have a joint booth at the IGF village, and please stop by and we can, we can chat and show you what was done in previous years, the network really uh, did some um, excellent work and, and produced some very concrete outputs uh, from their work. And uh, finally about the IGF village, what I said that I will say a few words. So the IGF village, as you know, is uh, located on the first floor 
So basically the ground floor when you enter from any of the two entrances we're using. Uh, it consists of 56 individual booths. That means that 56 uh, organizations from all over the world decided to present their work at the IGF. They are all non-commercial and they're presenting their missions and their objectives and how they fit in within the, this IGF global ecosystem. So please, if you could uh, tour the village, I think it would be also very valuable for you to engage with these individual organizations and uh, ask directly the focal points present there, uh, how can you maybe establish certain partnerships, how can you work together, just learn about their work, uh, and so on. So that would be very short about the NRIs and IGF Village. I will uh, ask Lynn maybe to take the floor again and just see whether we want maybe to open the floor. I will open the floor in, in just a moment for questions, but Anya reminded me, and I, I probably assumed this was sort of known, but the, the mandate um, for the IGF comes from uh, the World Summit Information Society process. In fact, it was a two-phase, um, full-fledged United Nations Summit 2003 in Geneva and 2005 in Tunisia. And the Tunis agenda um, lays out the framework for the Internet Governance Forum. And that's actually what drives kind of the principles, the processes about ex exclusivity. Um, as I said earlier, some of the unique things about the IGF is that all stakeholders, all participants participate from an equal, with an equal voice and an equal place in the, in the process here. If you go to um, a number of other um, United Nations or governmental meetings, um, quite often there's a segment or a time for governments to speak and then the other stakeholders, or it's, it's a consultation as opposed to an equal dialogue. The IGF really strives to make this a, 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 an equal dialogue across all stakeholders. Um, so, you know, we, we, there are some protocols we need to observe from time to time, and, and certainly we'll see that this afternoon where we're very fortunate to have, for the first time ever, United Nations Secretary General, Secretary General Guterres will be here and address um, us. And also for the first time ever, uh, no, that's not exactly true. I was saying President Macron is here as well. But of course, last year we had the president of Switzerland um, as well. But so we're very fortunate to have um, those two, those two indivi individuals. Yes, Renata? And the president of the Oh, that's right. And in, in Rio as well, um, we had President Dilma Rousseff. Um, so um, I think if you have more questions on kind of the, the IGF mandate, there's a lot of information on the IGF website. There's everything from a, a code of conduct as you participate in the IGF. There's the terms of reference for the multi-stakeholder advisory group. And again, we're really encouraging everybody to get involved. Um, we're, we're always looking for new participants. We typically serve three one-year terms, which means a third of the mag turns over um, every year. So. For most of the groups, that's roughly seven or eight positions open up every year, and, and for the governments, it's it's um, almost double that. Again, that's just straightforward from the, the percentage of, of participants. Um, so let me see. We have some MAG members um, in the room as well. Um, I'd like to open it up first, see if there are any questions from the newcomers or other people here in the room. And uh, then if not, you know, see if the, the MAG members that are here have anything they'd like to add. And I think the best way to do that is to, um, you know, raise your hand, and then if you could just say a little bit about just who you are, country you come from, stakeholder group, just for background. Renata? Yeah, just one quick addition. I am uh, Renata Kino Ribeiro, everyone. Hi. I'm from Brazil. I'm a MAG member. And Mary Uduma is uh, with me, uh, helping uh, also assist all newcomers uh, if you have any questions or uh, anywhere you want to to go and know about the IGF, find us. June Paris as well is a MAG member, and um, there will be others of us over there. And um, there are the knowledge cafes, which are spaces that are really for you to come and decompress and ask questions and meet other MAG members, ask about the activities, present your projects. So keep a look at the Knowledge Cafe uh, sessions. They are at lunchtime mostly. They do not compete with any other activity. So you can come, bring your sandwich, just compress, and yeah.
<laughs> and those are excellent points, Renat, and thank you for introducing yourself, June, and, and Mary. Any comments, questions? Mary? Um, uh, good morning, everyone. Um, as Renetta has said, I'm Mary. And uh, when I was a first-timer, a first-comer in uh, IGF, I got lost because there were so many workshops, so many open forums, so many of them. So you would uh, find out that there are some that you want to attend, uh, they conflict. But I'll advise that you, you draw your own timetable and make sure you follow it or else you get more confused. So make sure you know the room where the meeting is going to hold and the track you are interested in. Don't go to every track because you cannot, you cannot meet up. Just take a track or a, a session or a, a, in your interest, your particular interest. Okay, if you're interested in new technologies, follow them. If you're interested in human rights, uh, gender, or, 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 or evolution of uh, internet governance, or media, or, or, or uh, digital inclusion. So anyone that you're interested in, check through the, 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 the schedule and follow it. Because if you don't, do, if you don't uh, focus, you, you get lost. Thank you. Now that's a very good point, Mary. There are eight tracks this year, and the tracks and both the sessions within those tracks represent the kind of expressions of interest and percentage of interest across the community. Um, so again, that's why, that's why engagement is so important, both in things like the call for issues, in your local activities, in the workshop submission process, because we really depend on the community to um, both identify and then, of course, support um, the particular, particular topics that are of interest. We've also, with virtually all the sessions, um, all the workshop organizers were instructed to make them as interactive as possible. And the guideline was that 50% of any session should be for engagement and dialogue between the community and panelists or organizers, um, trying to kind of break down that, that barrier. So, I mean, again, we really do want to hear from everybody and are looking for, for engagement. There's also, we um, introduced some additional kind of reporting within the, um, the framework of the workshop here today to help facilitate um, kind of key messages coming out on a daily basis. But we've also asked for each one of the session organizers to um, ask specifically kind of what impact do you think the IGF can have on this particular issue over the coming year? Um, and we're looking for really concrete, specific ideas. That question should, in various uh, variations, come up during the sessions themselves. But we've also um, put a survey up um, on the homepage with a link so that you can specifically, because, you know, in any session, if it's an hour-long session, even if you have 30 minutes for engagement in the larger sessions, you're not going to hear from everybody, not even from nearly everybody. But we really do want the opportunity for everybody to, to get their voices in. So we're asking people to submit through that survey. Again, any concrete suggestions, any ideas you have on what the IGF or the IGF um, ecosystem could do to concretely advance those topics over the coming year. Renata? Thank you, Chair. Um, just a quick addition. Uh, we are really, this is a really interactive and community-driven IGF. So in addition to uh, what the chair has just said, we are receiving inputs for a multiple number of ways on the outcomes and in the survey. Uh, the main sessions have new formats. So do you want to be up there? Do you want to be a speaker? You haven't got a speaker slot yet? Come to the main sessions, and I would especially uh, recommend you coming to the human rights main session because we're going to leave a chair up there for you to come and speak. So these are innovations that all sessions are working on, Ideas Lab. So um, please make sure your voice is heard. Another excellent point. Thank you, Renata. Are there any... Any questions? Any question is fine. Modalities of participation, 
um, Tunis agenda, code of conduct. I mean, we really are here to facilitate participation and get as you know faster ramp up as we can in terms of uh, your participation. I can ask Anya if she has anything else she'd like to add. Well, nothing really specific. I hope now you know our faces, so I hope we're going to have opportunity to speak one-on-one -on -one with many of you if we meet at the venue. Uh, we're hoping really to have a, a huge participation in this meeting. Uh, we, in terms of the registered participants, we had the highest number ever. So we will see what these next three days will bring to us. So that's as, as much as I would like to add, and I think may, we can even conclude this session as we're on the Anya, top of the hour. Can, yes, Mary. Can you tell us about interpretations, whether the, the sessions that will be interpreted, because some of us may not. Uh, so, of course, the IGF is convened by the UN Secretary General, um, and all the main sessions, there are eight main sessions um, coincident with the eight themes that we have, and then, of course, there are also the opening ceremony and closing ceremonies. Um, uh, all of them have simultaneous interpretation in the six UN languages, um, but it is only those sessions that do. So, again, the main sessions, opening and closing ceremonies, have interpretation in the six UN languages. Um, I was going to mention that we also have a very robust online um, participation as well and platform. Um, again, we strive to be as inclusive as possible and you needn't have both the, the time or the means to travel to some city to participate. So we have a very robust platform with um, all of our sessions again are streamed, they are all transcribed. Um, there's uh, facilities for uh, remote participants or online participants, as I prefer, online participants to actually come in and participate in the sessions and get their questions or comments um, fed into the session as well. So we're continually working to improve that. Um, but if there are people back home that you think would be particularly interested in some of these sessions, then again, the information is available. And I think the sessions, once they're streamed and transcribed, are put on the, the web the same day by and large, sometimes within, you know, hours of the session happening. Well, if there are no more comments, and as somebody said, we had the luxury of returning 10 minutes, six minutes or something of, of time back to you, and we thank you very much and very interested in your um, perceptions and reflections and comments given your, the first, uh, if this is your first IGF, so please take advantage of the stock taking and all the opportunities we have to actually um, hear from you. Thank you.
can go. Hello, hello. Hello, everybody. Please take a seat. Thank you for coming and welcome all of you and congratulations, uh, you all won this Darminian race of finding room 11, uh, the first uh, meeting of the day from our perspective. My name is Frederick Donk, I'm with the Internet Society and I'm heading the European Regional Bureau. You know we have a tradition and that is to call and invite our communities, plural, um, our members, our chapters, org members and actually whoever is interested to discuss what we feel are critical issues uh, when we start um, the IGF. So that is our tradition. You will see um, and you have seen from the invitations that we have some interesting uh, subject that we would like to discuss with you. And you will see how seriously we take a collaborative process because you will be asked and called to really contribute. But we will have also a, a panel that will help us in this conversation and I will introduce it to you all in a few minutes. Before I do that, I uh, would like to seize these occasions to also introduce to you our CEO and President, Mr. Andrew Sullivan, who will spend a bit of time to just walk you through uh, how he believes um, and how are his intentions to drive the Internet Society uh, in the next coming months and years. So Andrew, if you could take the floor and join us, thank you very much. go here perhaps. Good morning everyone. Uh, thank you for the kind introduction. I, uh, the, I, I started as the CEO of the Internet Society in September and uh, uh, what I have learned is that the Internet has been created so that I can be on airplanes. Uh, so I, 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 people started ask me where are you based and I've come to tell them in airports. The this is not, of course, a, a permanent fact, though, because the interesting thing about the Internet Society is how many places uh, and how many people uh, we are. We're made up, uh, as a society, of participants, of members, of chapters, uh, of organizational members all around the world. And this frames the, the basic way that we think about how the Internet works. We like to say the Internet is for everyone. And so the question that we have is, how do we put that into action um, this year? Uh, we put out an action plan just the other day, and it is now on our website, so I won't bore you with uh, a recitation of all of those things, since I presume you can all read. Uh, but instead, I wanted to highlight a couple of things that I think are really important, particularly in framing the beginning of this panel today. Because the Internet is for everyone, we have several key pieces that we're trying to ensure. One is to make sure that we connect everybody in the world. So connectivity is extremely uneven throughout the world, uh, despite the fact that there are a lar large number of places where connectivity is quite good. There are also many places where connectivity is extremely bad and unlikely to get better without concerted action by a large number of participants uh, in the Internet society and in the wider society. So we continue to work on, on that connectivity through our efforts on community networks and also through our efforts around IXPs. Those are key initiatives for us. But another thing that is super important for us is building the trust in the infrastructure itself, that people need to believe that the Internet works. And the reason they need to believe that is because that's how the Internet works. The Internet is a network of networks, and if people don't connect willingly and they don't collaborate with one another. We don't have the internet at all. This is not some weird political stance that we have. It's a fundamental fact of the internet. And that means people need to believe that the internet infrastructure is trustworthy, that when you hook up to it, it's not dangerous. So that's why we continue to work on the um, issues around security of the Internet of Things, particularly with respect to consumer devices, because we don't want people to believe that the devices they're bringing into their homes are going to destroy them. And we want people to believe that the fundamental infrastructure of the Internet, the, the routing infrastructure, is not hostile to them, a problem that has festered in the Internet infrastructure for many, many years. And we continue to work on that. You should see our Manners Project produce its observatory pretty soon. The observatory is a way for operators of networks to look at uh, the, out, the outcomes on the, in the internet routing infra infrastructure. 
and to decide whether that routing infrastructure is doing what it said it would. So this is, this is a, a tremendous opportunity to restore that fundamental functioning of the way the internet works. You operate your network, I operate my, net, my network, and we implement the common protocols and then we work together to do that. That's also how the governance of the internet has to work. It has to work that way because if it doesn't, you don't get the internet. The internet just is a kind of collaboration. And that's the reason that the IGF is important because this is a forum where we can come together and try to work on that interoperation, that collaborative emergent technology that benefits us all so much. You know, uh, when the Internet so Society was founded, there was no question. If somebody said, do you want to hook up to the Internet, people would automatically say, oh yes, more Internet, always good. More connectivity, always good. And in the last couple of years, I've started to notice that people are not too sure. They're starting to become afraid of the Internet. They're forgetting, they're forgetting the big value that we get from the Internet because it's become ubiquitous and all we see are the problems. We need to work together, the Internet Society, the entire Internet community, we need to work together to make sure that we deliver the benefits of the Internet to the entire world. If we don't do that, we're going to lose a tool that is best for the development of all humanity. We have rarely seen a technology that enables so much good for so many people. So let us work together this week to make sure that we deliver that kind of benefit to all humanity securely in a trustworthy way that we can connect everybody. The internet is for everyone and the internet society wants to make that true. With that, I'm gonna turn it back to Frederic. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Andrew, for your words. And for those who are interested um, to know more about this, our 2019 plan is available on our website. So please uh, don't hesitate to um, check on it and ask questions to everybody here in this room from the Internet Society staff, starting with Andrew, of course. So let's get to the, um, to the main session of today. As I said, we used to organize a session when we start the IGF with some critical issues. So this one has been carefully cooked by Raquel, thanks a lot. You've seen on the invitation that the IGF, how did you say that, that the, uh, the, the world is better with the IGF than without, it says it all. We hear that uh, through our communities that some people might have some fatigue about the IGF, some people say it should be taken care of or improved or whatever vocabulary. Uh, we wanted to know more about that and to ask you what are your thoughts. Um, and to, in order to help us, uh, I have the chance to have a wonderful panel around us of people who know a lot about the IGF because they were there since the beginning. Starting with you, Thomas, Thomas Schneider. Um, I always hesitate how to introduce you when I see your CV. You were pretty well everywhere when it's about IGF. So Thomas, you are ambassador, the director for an international relationship for the Swiss government. You were the host last year. You are representative to the UN, the IGF, the ITU, UNESCO, well, all the UN. Uh, you're also a founder of the Eurodic, and you were the past chairman of the ICANN GAC. Thank you for being here with us. Um, do we have David Martineau in the room? I uh, start checking around. Thank you very much, David. Thank you for being there. You are the host of this year, and you are ambassador for cyber diplomacy and the digital economy. Thanks for being with us today. Last but not least, we have Gunther uh, Grathol. Thank you, Gunther. Um, he will be the host next year, so we have the real troika here, as we see in the European Union vocabulary, uh, the three governments who are responsible with hosting the IGF. Gunther, you are from um, the German uh, Ministry for Economic Affairs. Thank you for being here. So that is my panel, and I'd like to also to acknowledge Lynn, Lynn Saint Amour. Of course, everybody knows um, Lynn after uh, more than 13 years driving Isaac. Uh, you are now the chair of the MAC, and in this position I would burn to ask you also your feelings about the IGF assistance now. So, um, you will see, we will uh, have a rapid tour de table with our experts, and then we will turn to you. Uh, we will break this room in two parts and ask you to work a little bit and tell us what it is that you think. I forgot Raoul, of course. 
Um, this is so obvious here in front of me. Another expert, of course, Raul Echeberia, uh, who is the Vice President um, Global Engagement in the Internet Society. Sorry for this, uh, Raul. You, of course, will be called to give your thought as well as who were also part in so many endeavors since the beginning with the IGF. Sorry for this. Um, um, Thomas, why don't you start with some of your thought? If I would ask you, um, what, it is, what are your thoughts about the current IGF? Is there any fatigue? What do you think? Should there be any improvement? What would you say? Sorry? No, no, you can stay there. You can stay there. Thank you, Frederick. And first of all, good morning to everyone. And then also, of course, thanks to David and his team for organizing the IGF here in Paris, um, having uh, done the same in Geneva last year. I know that this is not an easy task, in particular if you have not planned this years ahead. Um, so um, a big thanks to, to, to the French government as well as to UNESCO and of course the hard -working, uh, our hardworking friends at the IGF Secretariat. We also know what it means for them to organize an IGF, so we're happy that they are still alive and, and here and thank them a lot for, for their uh, great work that they're doing. Uh, with regard to your question, um, I think we need to understand, first of all, where the IGF comes from. The IGF was, uh, for those who were there, the IGF was the result of a compromise at the World Summit on the Information Society 2003-2005, together with this famous process towards enhanced cooperation, uh, which I won't go into detail about, because otherwise that would take uh, the whole session. Um, the IGF was a compromise uh, that at least or the least common denominator, there should be a space to talk about internet governance issues. We might call it digital issues today. And then it was established. It was, it was an experiment. It was something new for the UN at that time to have a multi-stakeholder dialogue forum with uh, everybody, not just on equal level, all stakeholders, not just on equal level on participation, but also, and I think this is fundamental, in the shaping, in the setup, in the organization of the meeting and of the uh, of the sessions, of the content of, of the dialogue. And uh, our hope at that time was that the IGF would serve as a way to make people understand what the issues are, what we are talking about, what our so-called respective roles are in a particular aspect of digital or internet governance, and that it would serve as a catalyst for cooperation, cooperation of different stakeholders with different experience, different mandates, different resources uh, in a solution-oriented, opportunity-seizing-oriented way. And um, now we are like 12, 13 years after that decision. Um, some of us have been gone, going through all the IGFs, participated in all of them. We have about 80 uh, national and regional IGF structures that have taken up in different variations the model of the IGF. Um, and I, I think that basically the IGF has and is still fulfilling the purpose of being a forum where people get together, they learn from each other, they uh, understand the issues better, they may hopefully understand their own roles better, and they engage in cooperation. Um, but as you referred to, there is among uh, certain of us, or many of us, some kind of fatigue in the sense that, okay, we've had this now, this has been established, but that's not enough. This is something that you hear from many people. If you then ask them, like, okay, in which direction should we go, that this is where the problem then, of course, starts. Um, I think most of us do not want to create a new top-down structure in the UN that will deal with all aspects of digital governance or internet governance. Um, but nevertheless, there is a sense that something is missing. And if we look at the, at the way that the digital world has developed since the IGF was created, we have now uh, a lots of different uh, new applications and, and, and tools that we didn't even know they existed in, in 2005, or if we knew they existed, they didn't really uh, take as much space in our daily lives like, like they do now, just talking about social media, but also other aspects, of course. So there has been an enormous development in terms of what is possible technically, what applications we use. Also, connection has made enormous progress, connectivity. We are not there yet with connecting the whole world. And on the governance level, on the political level, 
on the cooperation level, not that much progress has achieved. So we are, I would dare to say, we are lagging a little behind in terms of how to deal with the issues. But the question is, what does that mean? What does ha does have a, uh, as an effect of the, uh, on the IGF? What we, as the organizer last year, together with some others, tried to do is basically keep the IGF in its existing role as a, as a space for dialogue and not for negotiation, as a space for bringing people together, enhancing understanding, building capacities, uh, inciting cooperation, but in improving its interactivity, imp trying to improve its, its uh, political visibility with high level, uh, representatives of all stakeholders, which is a challenge because everybody says that, or many people say that the IGF should not start nego negotiating outcomes. Uh, in particular, this comes from the private sector uh, and, and, and some Western countries, but at the same time, it's the same stakeholder to say, well, I can't come to the IGF because my boss doesn't allow me because it's not creating outcomes. So there's a little bit of a chicken and egg problem. Uh, in terms of what the IGF should do and then why people say it's maybe not what it should be, um, which I think we need to be transparent and honest about uh, and also explain if we still think that the IGF should remain a forum for dialogue and not start negotiating uh, outcomes, then we should explain why we think this is important and we should explain to, to the political leaders why we think that they should nevertheless, or, the, or in particular because it is not a negotiating forum, participate in this. So what we tried to do last year is to make the outcome a little more tangible by introducing these so-called Geneva messages. That is not something that we invented. We've done this in Eurodic uh, for the, for, since the beginning. It tries to uh, capture the discussion in a more a readable, easier to access format in format of short bullets that hopefully people use when they go home, when they go home into their silos and institutions that they can refer to uh, by saying this is the latest uh, stage of the discussion as it was held at the IGF. We also tried uh, to improve the interactivity. We think that the inclusiveness is, is unique at the I, uh, IGF if you compare it to other conferences. We keep fighting for having as little uh, minutes devoted to panelists uh, and, and to speakers on the floor, but to give the maximum amount of speaking time to the audience because I think we, the more we use the crowd intelligence that is gathering at the IGF, the more insights that we get. But we think that we should not necessarily fundamentally change the IGF. We can prove it in, in elements uh, on, on, on its uh, operational sides with the MAG, with, with the way things are, are, are prepared. Of course, we should improve the resource situation. We should try to make it more planable, um, approve the, the MAG earlier so that they can start work at the beginning of the year. We hear there's some positive signals that this is actually working this year. Um, what we would need is uh, a more political figure uh, on top or, or as, as, the, as a visible face of the IGF, like we had it with Nitin Desai as the special advisor uh, for the UN Secretary General and his office on internet governance issues. This is also not something new. The question is who designates and, and, and who decides who that political figure would be. Uh, maybe we just let the IGF community put forward some names and vote on it instead of having some small club deciding about this because this is wh one of the problems why it didn't happen. So there are a number of things that, that can and should be done to improve the IGF, but we think that basically the IGF is not is not wrong, it, it, it still serves its purpose and it should in our view continue to serve its purpose. Where we're missing out is in terms of cooperation, in terms of follow-up action on the discussions at the IGF. Uh, we think that this is the key element to, to drive uh, uh, the digital world in a way that everybody on the world is, uh, is benefiting from, from uh, what is uh, available in terms of new applications and technologies. So we have great hopes in the UN uh, Secretary General's panel on digital cooperation that this may help us not just strengthening the IGF and use the IGF as the basis, as the first step for people to get together, but then go home from the IGF and cooperate in a more structured way, in a, in a way that follows some principles of inclusivity, uh, of, of transparency, accountability, openness, uh, with some diversity, subsidiarity, and that after the IGF, the, the, the gaps are filled between uh, 
having a, just a talk shop and having new UN institutions or existing UN institutions with new mandate, I think there's a lot of room for improving digital cooperation. So let me finish by saying don't blame the IGF, improve digital cooperation. Thank you. Thank you very much, Thomas. Um, from, from what I hear then, um, don't touch the DNA of the IGF, but you see that the issue might be political and so should be the solution? Yeah, okay. David Martineau, thank you for being the host uh, today. What's your take about the IGF situation? Well, thank you for giving me the floor. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Paris. We are happy to have you here. Uh, we already, as you've, you've mentioned, we, as you've seen, you, we, we managed to have a, a rainy day so that you don't have any regret and you, for being focused on, on the uh, IGF panels. Uh, and we'll see if we consider that everybody's worked enough in the coming days. If we can have a sunny day, we'll see about that. Uh, I think we're very much in line with what Thomas said. Uh, sorry, I was out of the room, but I know what he was saying, because we've been, <laughs> we've been, first because we've been knowing each other for years now, and second because we thought that it would be very useful to uh, work as a troika, sort of a troika, with the outgoing host country and with the incoming host country, which is Germany, and uh, uh, we. So we've talked among ourselves, uh, ourselves about what should be done with the IGF. Um, again, very much in line with what Thomas said. Uh, the fact that President Macron offered that France host the IGF and that was back in, you told me about the problem in, in February and uh, I came back to Paris and I made the proposal which was eventually accepted in April. So. The, the reason why he offered that France host the 2018 IGF was that, as you know, France is very attached to the UN system. We believe uh, it is incredibly useful and because it's unique. And we believe it has a role to play, including on all topics of internet governance. Having said that, uh, we believe that now the IGF should yeah, maybe in a way come back to its DNA and to its very mandate that was given in 2005 in Tunis and maybe try to do more in the coming years. So we sort of decided to take stock of what our Swiss friends did last year with the uh, Geneva messages and so there will be Paris messages this year. I wouldn't be surprised if there were Berlin messages next year, but that will be out of my control. Uh, and we believe that it's not enough anymore to have the kind of discussions that we've been having for years at the IGF. We believe the community expects to be consulted. We believe the community expects to be in a position to give its advice or its position. Uh, the problem is, and we need, by the way, we need the community to express itself and define what could be a, a global position or, or ideas on, on such and such topic. Why? Because we see new challenges every day. In the digital world, there is a new topic every year, every day. Hopefully some of them, fortunately, some of them actually vanish. <laughs> Otherwise, we would be uh, more than occupied um, and as a government representative I can tell you that we need to have the kind of feedback that can help us to define what a smart political resolution should be. So this is where we are and we believe that if we want to be in a good position to rely on these possible recommendations we need the process that would lead to these recommendations to be unquestionable. And for that, we need it to be transparent, we need it to be open, we need, to, we need it to be understandable, we need it to be universal and efficient. So this is the sort of very easy mission that we have ahead of us, we believe. And we believe that it is up to the community to 
think to conceive the sort of grammar of the multi-stakeholder approach that we're, try, that we're trying to follow. It's not an easy task, but unless we manage to make the sort of progress we need on how to define what is legitimate voice, what are fair consultations, uh, how do we organize the work of the community to be able to write this sort of recommendation, we would, if we managed to do that, then we would, we would have made a, a, a fantastic progress. Uh, very much in line with Thomas, again, on the fact that we believe the IGF needs to have a more prominent political role. We need Lean to be better helped, uh, to have more resources, to have uh, uh, more possibilities to travel, to meet with uh, uh, political uh, and economic and social leaders around the world. And uh, we need her to be the voice. Well, her, not in tout personne, but uh, as, the, as the MAG chair, to do that kind of, of mission, which is absolutely crucial for us. Um, I may pause here, but um, first I want to say that the very fact that the, the website of the UNIGF is under attack today shows that it's a strategic place. Um, and uh, I wouldn't be surprised if, if UN Secretary General Gutierrez and President Macron were to address these very topics this afternoon. So uh, again, welcome, you welcome everybody in Paris, and I wish you the, the more fruitful discussions here. Thanks. Thank you very much, David. Thank you for those very nice words. Um, you should expect maybe some question from this community about what you mean by consultation in a multi-stakeholder process, but that might come later. Gunther, the last part of the troca then. Tell us, what is your take? Yeah, thank you very much and good morning, everyone. I would like to thank, in particular, David Martignon and his team for uh, preparing here this global conference in a very short time. It must have been a lot of work. We know how much work it is because uh, we are preparing uh, the next IGF uh, 2019, but we had much more time, more than 18 months. But we see already that it's really a challenge to, um, to organize it. But uh, we are doing it uh, with uh, a lot of passion because uh, we believe really in, in the basic approach of this forum here, the multi-stakeholder approach. It is really important that um, the internet remains an open, secure, reliable, interoperable, and truly global infrastructure, which um, is more and more a challenge in, in these times. And I think that this forum here is the right place to keep the internet as it was, a room for innovation, for growth, for employment, for new idea, ideas, for crea creativity, and so on. And that's the reason why the Ministry for Economic Affairs in Berlin has decided last year to um, organize in 2019 the next um, Internet Governance Forum. So this forum has a future, it, it will continue. And um, on, on the basic philosophy, I do not have much to add than, my, than the previous speaker said already. We see us completely here in a continuous line with the colleagues from Switzerland, with Thomas Schneider and with David Martignon, with France. It's, it's, a, it's a way from, from Geneva via Paris, Paris to Berlin in the meaning that we think we should strengthen the IGF a little bit. It's, it's not so easy to strengthen it, but we, we all um, want to put effort here on, on, on that challenge. And um, what is really important, we should make it more relevant. Uh, how to make it more relevant? Yeah, Thomas said already, we need perhaps more tangible outcomes. We need perhaps more political visibility. 
and um, we should improve interaction, that's true. And um, how could we um, tackle this challenge? Um, first of all, we need a relevant agenda. And I think a relevant agenda is the product of a discussion among multi-stakeholders. So this is the right way to, to put the important and relevant topics on the table. Um, and in this regard, the IGF is perfect. There's nothing, there's no room for more improvement. Here we are really brilliant. But um, what can be improved is um, the, the outreach, the, the process uh, for having really impact of the discussion that take place here. Um, we have to raise awareness of, of all the issues, topics, discussions that are taking place here in this forum among the general public. And we shouldn't forget that this is also a part of the mandate which was uh, agreed on in Tunis in 2005. So we should work on this more perhaps than before. And uh, what is needed uh, to achieve this, I think first of all we should really get all key stakeholders from all regions of the world on board. This is one point and the German government has decided to make some money available for the United Nations in order to cover travel expenses from the global, from, from participants that come from the global south. Um, and they should come to Berlin. So this is one point to make it really global, a global event, a global discussion should take place. First point. Second point is we want to integrate more the business community and high level representatives of governments. And how can we achieve this? I think we, we hope that we can achieve this if we have a high level segment, like it is here also in, in Paris. Uh, Premier Macron will open the session in the afternoon. This is really a very good sign. And um, next year our Chancellor will open, well, I hope so, <laughs> will open the IGF in Berlin. And uh, the same was uh, true in, in Switzerland last year. Um, so when, when we achieve to attach more high-level people coming to the forum, then that will um, bring also other high-level people to the forum and perhaps also business. And we have um, one day, the day before the IGF starts, the so-called day zero before the IGF, and there we want to, to make something perhaps more official where something can be adopted or agreed on kind of recommendation or kind of declaration among ministers. We are still in a process of, of thinking about that, but um, perhaps it's a possibility to combine such a discussion platform like the IGF, multi-stakeholder approach, and something that is um, more official. We are still in the process <coughs> of, of thinking how to do this, but um, these are our, at least these are our ideas. Um, yeah, we try to, to contact directly, to go to business people, to business representatives, to integrate them, and we are coming, or we are working in the Ministry for Economic Affairs, so we have the contacts, and we hope uh, that we can broaden here the community and make it more relevant, as said before. And then we want to, last, uh, last point is that we want particular put a focus on the cooperation also with parliaments. And here today in Paris, we have a par parliament um, delegation that is attending here from Germany and also from the European Parliament. And this good practice we want to continue also in Berlin. So above all, we are really proud and we are delighted that the IGF next year will take place in Berlin in November from 25 25th to 29th of November and um, 
We will not only host the IGF next year, but also a, prep, a kind of preparatory or parallel um, meeting of internet and jurisdiction from 3rd to 5th of June, also in Berlin. And we hope that we, that we can get some input for the discussion then later in November, uh, coming out of this conference. And we are cooperating very closely also with Mission Publique and with, uh, f of course, with the national IGF, German IGF, which is a really strong and very important partner for us. So I very much hope to see many of you also next year in the multi-stakeholder events in Germany. And um, only together we will maintain the stability and the, the innovative power and, and all those positive outcomes that, um, that are promised by such a, a yeah, well-established platform like, like the Internet Governance Forum. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Raoul Echeberry, you are also a pioneer in the IGF. You've been there since the very beginning. So what's your take? <coughs> Thank you very much, Frederick. Uh, good morning, everybody. In fact, when I'm, I listened to uh, Thomas uh, speaking about the inception of the IGF in 2003, 2005, I was part of that negotiation. That, uh, I was uh, heavily involved with in the negotiation. That's, it looked like it was yesterday, but it was uh, 13 years ago. But first of all, uh, let, me, uh, let me add my voice to add to our host this year, the Government of France, through our colleague uh, David Martineau. Uh, and thank you very much for taking the time to be with us in a very busy day. <laughs> that's, I, I know that's, uh, that uh, you are very busy preparing also the not only the IGF, but also the participation of the President of France that will enlighten the, the, the importance of this, uh, of this forum. Then, um, thank you very much also to the government of, uh, of uh, Germany because uh, taking the lead on organizing the next, uh, the next HF that, that uh, we think will be crucial in, the, in, the, in, this, uh, in this process of uh, promoting uh, changes and transformations of the IGF. And it's, it's very good to see the government, the previous host, the current host, and the future host working together aligned on, the, on this issue. Uh, I, I published a blog in, about uh, IGF. Uh, um, the title of the blog was Let's Reform the IGF. I published that blog in March. And I have to say that the, uh, it had a lot of repercussions at that time. It was, in fact, it was surprising for um, many people. And the, the, the level of the conversation since uh, March uh, has changed um, a lot. And it is uh, amazing to see how many people have add, added their voices to the idea on the, uh, to promote improvements of IGF. One of the, of the sentences that I included in my, in, my, in my blog is a sentence that my colleague Raquel had uh, made famous because, uh, in fact, it's the title of, the, of, this, uh, of this session, that is, the, the war is much better with the IGF than without the IGF. And so that's, it, it says uh, a lot about uh, our position with regard to the HF. So what we are, what we are proposing is not uh, to, to disband the HF to create something new. We are, we are proposing to, uh, to, um, in, to improve the, this, uh, this forum. And the idea behind this is that the, the HF is the most innovative governance, governance experience that we have seen in our life. And so this, we, this is, it's the, the investment we have made with IGF, how the community has learned to participate, to work together in a, with a different logic than the traditional governance system, not building majorities, but trying to build consensus and being transparent, open, participating on equal footings. This is, is, a, is something really is a huge asset for the community. And it would be very bad if, uh, if uh, the stakeholders start to think that this is not the most relevant place for coming to discuss the most relevant issues. So this is why we have to improve the HF in order to make it, to continue making it uh, attractive for all the stakeholders to come together to solve the, all the facing challenges. 
And uh, as many uh, people, all the panelists, and including our CEO Andrew, have said before, is, uh, is the, the internet is very different of the internet in 2005. And so the, it's, we have the, uh, the sorry, the internet is, a, is an intrinsic uh, component of every human activity today. This is why it is important, and it is important for the governments and for the community in general. So the. So we need to deal with, uh, with a lot of uh, challenges that are coming up every day. And uh, so the, the impact that the technology and Internet uh, particularly are, in, are producing in the, in the life of the, of the people is, uh, is, is big. And this is why we care. And we need uh, relevant forums that, to deal with those uh, issues. And the, the improvements, are, uh, I, th I think so I, I agree with everything ha that has been said before, and this is a very good news, and probably that's the, the, the most important outcome of this uh, discussion, is, that, is the level of agreements. The, there are many, many practical things that we can do in order to improve the, 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 the HEF and the discussion in HEF, and some of them have been already mentioned. Uh, I would add that uh, we cannot continue having uh, the number of uh, sessions, competing sessions that we have so far. We need to uh, more focused uh, IGF um, based on issues, as uh, we have been discussing with Thomas in many, many opportunities, as uh, not, not based, not based uh, exclusively in the, in the meeting itself, but in the, on the discussion. We need to improve the intersessional activities. And so, when we say intersectional activities, that we need to connect better with other forums in order to uh, push for the outcomes from our discussions so they are considered in the discussions that are held in other places. And we need to, discuss, to decide when that some more discussion is needed on a topic within this community, so we need to provide the avenues for continuing the discussions uh, in between meetings. And uh, so also Gunther mentioned the, the, uh, the high-level discussion. And we have uh, some, and Thomas also uh, uh, talk about, talked about the, the, uh, the outcomes. We already produce outcomes and, and in, many, in many meetings, in many forums. And so I, I like it very much the way that Thomas put this in the, the contradiction between the same people that, that complain uh, uh, about the lack of outcomes is the same people that sometimes uh, object the, 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 the improvements in order to produce outcomes. But we are already doing that in, the, in Eurodig, where you are very involved. Eurodig is, uh, is very innovative in producing outcomes. The Asian Pacific Regional HEF too. And we produced uh, outcomes also in Net Mundial in 2014 in a very, in a very innovative way, uh, producing outcomes without introducing formal negotiation mechanisms. This is a, is a very innovative. So we can do that again. And so we can have the, level, the, the high level discussions probably to uh, to analyze those outcomes. If we have few tracks, uh, so we are focused in few tracks, not in 100 uh, parallel uh, sessions, and, and so we can produce some kind of outcomes. We can review those outcomes in the high-level discussion, probably at the end of the meeting instead of at the, uh, the beginning. The, it's good to see that we are together on this. And so Internet society has been strongly committed with the HF, and it's still strongly committed. and so. With, uh, we are um, bringing content, uh, uh, bringing fellows. This year we have again a beautiful group of uh, young uh, leaders coming to the HF and so through our fellowship programs. So this, we want to continue working uh, with all the community. We will do that, and so, but we have to keep in mind that uh, if, we, if the discussions uh, it's divert to many places, so, so we will also uh, have to, to uh, distribute our, our resources to be present everywhere, to follow discussions in, in, ten, uh, in 10 forums instead of uh, in, in just one. This is one of the reasons because we need to strengthen this place. If that's a, we have learned how to work together here. This is the best place to do it. So let's reform the HF, not uh, to destroy it. Let's reform the HF to improve it because the war is much better with the HF than without it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Raul. Thank you for this vibrant call that you already did, and indeed, I have heard no one challenging to what you just said, that the world is a better place without Asia. So it might just be one of the main sentences that we might keep in mind. Um, 
Lynn, you were kind enough to say that you were ready to say a few words. I would like to include you in a broader conversation because, you know, there is a principle in IGF is that um, the plans never go as planned. And I've been told that we have no time anymore to break this uh, room because we are close to the end. So, Lynn, if you can say a few words and then I would like some of you to react as well. Thank you. Thank you, Frederick. And thank you to Internet Society and everybody for organizing this panel as well. I was approached last night at a reception, so <laughs> um, fair, sort of fair warning. Um, you know, the IGF has, has long been focused on improvements and evolution, as are so many of the internet processes we participate in, because it's changed so many fundamental practices in our in our day-to-day -day experiences. Um, I'm not going to go through all of them here. Um, there are a couple that I will, will point out just in a moment, because I really would like to be very brief in my comments and really engage the audience. We've instructed every one of the workshop organizers that they should plan on 50% of their session being left for participation from the people in the room. And of course, we're well beyond that now. Um, as I said, there have been many, many um, improvements. We have working groups on improvements. Um, we have a working group working on multi-year strategic work program. We have another working group um, that has been focused on fundraising. That is a significant problem within the IGF today. We are an extra budgetary project of the United Nations. All of the funds um, support the Secretariat, some developing country participation activities, and um, some staff and consultants for some of the intercessional activities. These annual events are actually hosted by the host country, this year France, and we are very, very Thankful to David Martineau um, and the French government um, for supporting us and hosting us this year. Um, but so many of the improvements we're looking for really require more staff and more resources to be quite direct about it. The secretariat runs on a staff of four, and one of those is an IT person. So if you can imagine what that takes to, to work cooperatively with over 110 national and regional IGF youth initiatives with over four best practice forums, over 17 dynamic coalitions, and um, a major policy initiative, connecting and enabling the next billion, and of course try and support and drive the work of 55 very active MAG members across working groups, et cetera. It, it's, it's a Herculean task. Um, so that's one of the, uh, I think, main um, roadblocks, frankly, to the IGF doing even more. Um, I think my, my um, last comment would be um, we have all focused much more on tangible outcomes. How can we make um, all the outputs and outcomes we get from the work of the IGF more accessible? And, and I really mean accessible broadly, more, more concise, more useful, more, um, you know, more directed, more topical, um, as well as, of course, um, more findable on the, uh, on the IGF website as well. Last year, we did pilot um, uh, something called Geneva Messages. Um, that was for the main sessions only. It was a pilot um, that was well supported by the IGF community. So um, we have now sort of institutionalized that, if you will. Um, going forward, of course, there will be IGF messages because they are messages of the community. Um, and we are doing them not only for the main sessions, but also for every workshop session. And we're also focused much more thematically this year than we have been in past years. What I would like to ask everybody to do, many of the workshops are doing this themselves, and many of them have learned from a lot of the national and regional IGF initiatives, are really trying at the end to try and engage people and pulling out a small number of, of key messages themselves and looking for some sort of reaction from the people that are participating in the room and online um, with whether or not those messages kind of resonate with the discussion that was held in the room. And I think that's an extremely useful um, piece of work for pulling some of those messages out, but I think it doesn't also allow us to tap into the community as much as we would like. So one of the things we're doing, and on the home page of our website, um, there's a, a survey which will is specifically asking what impact can the IGF have on this topic or this issue? It's meant to come from each workshop session over the next year. So we want to hear from everybody, and we want concrete, specific ideas. We want it focused on impact, on advancing issues, and we're really looking at a time frame of, you know, one to two years so that it's not, you know, a, a we want world peace <laughs> sort of statement. 
Um, really would encourage everybody to um, promote that within your own networks. Um, please go to the website and do that for the sessions you participate in, or those that you don't, if you have a particular um, um, you know, point you want to make on one of the other topics or themes. Again, all our sessions are streamed and transcribed, and they're posted, so you can even um, look at them outside of the IGF or post the IGF and submit comments um, subsequently as well. So I want to thank you for the time. I hope I didn't take too much, um, but really we're, we're really wanting to engage deeply with the community, so jump in. Thank you, Lynn. I will jump on what you just said. Uh, please, their community, uh, you have a unique chance to talk to the Troika. You know, um, I see this gentleman there. Thank you, Frederick. My name is Walter Natris. I will spell that for the scribes. It's W-O-U-T, then D-E, then N-A-T-R-I-S. That's correct, thank you. An S at the end, yes. Um, in the past two years, I've been able to work on something called the Strengthening Cooperation in the context of the IGF, and it has two iterations by now. Um, basically, what that started off with is by literally tapping the IGF community on what could the IGF be in the future. And we had a room full in Geneva on day zero, and actually everybody started thinking about their own ideas. And then you can see that a lot converges and a lot of recommendations can be made in a session of one and a half hour. And I think that that is a major lesson that if something is truly uh, seen as truly important, people will speak their mind. And how do you get to something important that will probably come from emerging issues, from the workshop proposals? So if you say, for example, we have 10 proposals next year on cyber security, why have 10 sessions instead of telling the people, the room is yours, but the re you have to come up with recommendations at the end of this session, which will be published on the IGF website. Do you have to agree? No because they're recommendations and ways forward you can actually learn. And that's something which the session last year on strengthening cooperation taught me. People will speak their mind and will try to think together on getting something forward. So that, I think that is one. The other thing that came out is that there could be pilots held in 2019. They, will, they are being sort of advertised in the multi-year uh, working group, strategic working group that have been made so the other thing is outreach. If we need more people and different people on specific topics, then people within the MAG can actually tap their networks. You can ask people who you know are, are very well versed in specific topics and experts. You can invite them actively to participate in a some sort of intercessional that comes together with it at the IGF. And I think the last thing that is important is to celebrate successes. If the IGF actually manages to come up with an outcome which makes a difference, and I'll give a very short example of it. When I was working for the Secretariat on c search two years, three years ago now, there was a topic they were not allowed to do from the c search side. We're not going to say we need to reach out to governments. And I wrote it as a recommendation anyway because it was really the elephant in the room. A year later, they were working with the OECD. There was a whole paper compiled, this is what CSERs do, explaining it to governments. And that came forward from the first iteration of CSERs. I never read it anywhere on any IGF website. We actually managed to change the mindset of people that are now reaching out to governments and actually governments understand what CSERs do. So that's just one example of something the IGF can reach. And then we should also be seeing people that they should be doing that. So thank you very much. Thank you, Walt. Um, I see someone else. Yeah, please. Yes, good morning, everyone. My name is Christina Arida, and I'm a um, member of the ISOC chapter of Egypt. Um, so um, I would like first to thank France for, uh, for all the efforts uh, they've been putting into the IGF this year. But also I'd like to thank ISOC for dedicating space at this open forum to discuss the IGF improvements. I think it's a, it's a timely, important topic to reach out to the global um, internet community where ISOC chapters actually can um, have a marvelous discussion about that. Um, I, I want to tackle one specific point that I have heard mentioned um, 
uh, through, through the discussions this morning, and that is uh, the point of outreach of the IGF as, as, an, as a needed improvement. And coming from a, a region where um, there is evident need for such outreach, especially uh, as we're talking about government leaders, but also if we're talking about leaders from the different stakeholder groups, uh, where this is much needed at the IGF, uh, specifically uh, uh, from, this, from the Global South. So um, I think, um, and I've seen uh, the work that has been uh, done by the MAG. I've been there for many, many years. It's a tremendous work. I, I, I salute uh, Lynn for orchestrating that uh, those years. But I, I would say there is uh, an integration that is needed between the work that the MAG is doing in terms of the agenda putting, but also the work that's been doing, doing by the hosts to uh, secure uh, high-level segments. Um, I think what we need is not separate high-level segments, but we need those two um, paths integrated in a way that um, um, the high-level leaders, whether it's government or other stakeholder groups, are integrated within the agenda um, of uh, is being put by the MAG. And this is work that has to be done very early on. We have uh, next year Germany, we have the host already this year in place very early on. I think there is an opportunity to do that uh, through the coming year between the host country and, uh, and the MAC. Thank you very much. Yes, please. Thank you. I'm Nardina Nimmer, a youth at IGF um, ISOC fellow for this year. And my question is basically, how do you want to, in the future, bring governments and companies to listen to academia, civil society, on issues such as surveillance and the use of drones in war? Thank you. I will keep your, your question if you've got time. I love it. Please. Namaste, bonjour, thank you. Um, I'm a youth at uh, IGF fellow as well. Um, I would like to thank the French government, uh, Internet Society, Google and Microsoft for allowing me to be here. Um, um, I wish to know, I work with young girls in Delhi, India, and I wish to know if, if there can be an implementation mechanism or something like an SDG compass uh, for IGF through which I can um, uh, implement the recommendations made uh, to IGF to improve uh, access to internet in, uh, uh, with, with young girls in India. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, last, last one and then I will have to wrap up, I'm afraid. Thank you so much. Um, my name is Mary Helda Kong. I'm from Uganda. I'm also um, a youth at IGF fellow. Um, mine is more of um, an observation. This year I attended my first IGF forum in Uganda and um, the main theme was creating um, online trust, which is basically the theme that we have this year. So my question is, should the regional and national IGF meetings have the same themes as the main IGF? Because we have more pressing national issues in our countries, like the social media tax and having people online which is um, as a result of, if you look at fake news and trust, these are issues that are a result of actually having people online, which we do not have, right? So majority of the people are not online. Shouldn't we as national IGF chapters be focusing on the issues that are pressing in our particular countries and as Lynn said, to have more tangible in outcomes? Thank you. Well, I, I believe we won't have the time to address those questions, but I would like to keep them because I believe you three made very good suggestions. How can we actually improve the representation, align the themes at regional level, international level, and, and, and find more processes to involve people from different stakeholders, including the theme of mass <coughs> So we will keep this. Um, I had a question for the Troika. We won't have time. We need to wrap up. I see, I see desperate sign from, from Raquel. Uh, but I believe that your message were very clear. And what I heard today, Raul, is a good news. I mean, your sentence is still very valid. I hear we need more IGF. I hear that people are even more positive on the way that we should make it more relevant, more focused, uh, more dedicated to include uh, including other bodies as a parliament. So those are all very good message, including the very pragmatic message from Lynn. This community need to contribute uh, as much as they can through those sessions and through the website. So please continue to feed us. ISOC take this very seriously. You know we engaged since the very beginning in this IGF. So we'll continue to collect your ideas. But I believe at least what we heard today is very encouraging. We need more 
IGF than less IGF. So thank you for being here. I know there is a bit of frustrations, but that's the start of the IGF. So enjoy this wonderful moment of exchange. Thank you very much.